for justice. Families of the life Esitimeni victims could be in for a long wait. The National Prosecuting Authority says it does not have enough evidence to take the issue to court. It has now set a formal inquest to look into the tragedy. Some reaction now on this story, and I'm joined by Christine Momalo. She's from the Life Esitimeni Family Committee and a sister of one of the people who died as a result of that tragedy. Christine, thank you very much for waking up to talk to us. So, uh, the prosecuting authority, two years of investigations, and they're saying they don't have enough evidence uh, to take a solid case to court. Mm -hmm. Does that inspire confidence in our criminal justice system? Well, it's actually frustrating, to be really honest with you. Um, and if you listen to the rest of the families in the very same position, they are very angry, very upset, um, but they do know that they, there's nothing they can do um, other than to, you know, to go with what the NPA is saying. It's a tough one, this one, Christine, because when you were told about this particular outcome, were you as families able to ask detailed questions? For example, uh, were the three top officials that have been on everyone's lips since this story broke out, were those three top officials interviewed and how is it possible that they could not be linked to the deaths of these uh, 144 people? I can tell you that we actually asked a lot of questions. I mean, we gave different scenarios of, you know, what they could possibly look at in terms of prosecution and according to them to actually instigate an, uh, a criminal matter or, or case you really have to have solid evidence because they're saying to us, we can go to court, but the matter will be thrown out and we'll struggle even more to get it back into court. Mm. So rather we go the inquest route, knowing that we've got our facts in hand and we couldn't argue with them on that point. In the end, when all is said and done, do you trust that the criminal justice system will deliver justice for your loved ones? We don't know. We can only hope, but all we can do is push because, I mean, since after the arbitration, we have been literally on the NPA's head or neck rather, pushing them to actually get to a point because we've been asking for a decision mm -hmm. literally since the arbitration. And only two weeks ago, I think they called us in and, and said to us, look, this is the decision. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, tried to reason with us. You know, I think what makes this tragedy even more painful is that some families still don't know where their loved ones are. Yeah. So after the 144 deaths mm -hmm. that were announced, that figure seemed to have increased somewhat with the 60 that mm. were still missing. Yes. So that list of 60 has now been whittled down, mm -hmm. which means that some have been discovered. Been Nine remain missing. Have you been asking any questions about how or where government is looking to try and find them? You know, one thing we found out through all when we were protesting and when we went to the ombudsman, it was what it, the, the NGOs that were named were not the only ones involved. We actually later found out that there were NGOs in Orange Farm and some of the, the patients that were on the missing list were found in these other NGOs. Mm. But on that list, there was also unknown names. So my question is, where do you begin to look for an unknown? And how did somebody become unknown? So there's a lot of things that went really, really horribly wrong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the other hope that we have about this inquest is that maybe some of those questions will be answered, you know? And we will not only look at just the top three, we will look at every official and their role in this whole process because the police were also involved at some point. So it's, it's going to open a, a bigger kind of worm, worms than the arbitration did. Yeah. So that's, the kind of, that's, that's what we're clinging on to because um, some of us still don't really know what happened for example, to my sister, how she died and what really, really happened. So we don't know that as yet. Well, Christine Mano, thank you very much for making the time to speak to us. Mm -hmm. I assume we don't know yet the date of this inquest because that hasn't been announced. Well, they're still in the process of appointing a judge and that's probably going to take the rest of the year. So we're looking at probably in the new year. Thank you for your time. She uh, speaks for the Life Esitimeni family.